Perfidious Albion is a pejorative phrase used within the context of international relations diplomacy to refer to alleged acts of diplomatic slights, duplicity, treachery and hence infidelity with respect to perceived promises made to or alliances formed with other nation-states by monarchs or governments of the UK or England prior to 1707 in their pursuit of self-interest. Perfidious signifies one who does not keep his faith or word from the Latin word perfidia, while Albion is an ancient and now poetic name for Great Britain. <inaudible> Origins and use The use of the adjective, perfidious, to describe England has a long history, instances have been found as far back as the 13th century. A very similar phrase was used in a sermon by 17th-century French bishop and theologian Jacques Benigneux Bossuet. The coinage of the phrase in its current form, however, is conventionally attributed to Augustin Louis de Examenez, a French playwright who wrote it in a poem entitled L'Ere des Français, published in 1793. In this context, Great Britain's perfidy was political. In the early days of the French Revolution, when the revolution aimed at establishing a liberal constitutional monarchy along British lines, many in Great Britain had looked upon the revolution with mild favour. However, following the turn of the revolution to republicanism with overthrow and execution of Louis XVI, Britain had allied herself with the other monarchies of Europe against the revolution in France. This was seen by the revolutionaries in France as a «perfidious» betrayal. Le perfide Albion became a stock expression in France in the 19th century, to the extent that the Goncourt brothers could refer to it as a well known old saying. It was utilized by French journalists whenever there were tensions between France and Britain, for example during the competition for colonies in Africa, culminating in the Fashoda incident. The catchphrase was further popularized by its use in La Famille Fenouillard, the first French comic strip, in which one of the characters fulminates against Perfidious Albion, which burnt Joan of Arc on the Rock of St. Helena. Carried away by his anglophobic fury, the character mixes up Joan of Arc with Napoleon, who was exiled to the British island of St. Helena. In the German speaking area, the term Das Perfide Albion became increasingly frequent, especially during the German Empire 1871 against the backdrop of rising British-German tensions. <laughs> <laughs> examples of usage The term often refers to the English reneging on the Treaty of Limerick of 1691, which ended the war between the predominantly Roman Catholic Jacobite forces and the English forces loyal to William of Orange, giving favourable terms to the Irish Catholics, including the freedoms to worship, to own property and to carry arms, but those terms were soon repudiated by the penal laws of 1695. In Portugal, the term was widely used after the 1890 British ultimatum, after Cecil Rhodes' opposition to the pink map. Bastiat uses the term sarcastically in his satirical letter, The Candlemaker's Petition, first published in 1845. It is used by Ian Smith in his memoirs The Great Betrayal, 1997, to describe his opposition on the British handling of Rhodesian independence. In his book I'm Not the Only One 2004, British politician George Galloway expressed the opinion that Kuwait is "...clearly a part of the greater Iraqi whole, stolen from the motherland by perfidious Albion." In 2012, Fabian Picardo, the chief minister of Gibraltar, used the phrase to describe the UK government's position on the UN Decolonisation Committee, "...perfidious Albion, for this reason." The position of the United Kingdom is as usual so nuanced that it's difficult to see where they are on the spectrum, but look that's what Britons like and we all love being British." The father of Israeli novelist Amos Oz wrote pamphlets for the Ergon that attacked "'Perfidious Albion' during the British rule in Palestine. The Italian term, "'Perfida Albion' Perfidious Albion was used in the propaganda of fascist Italy to criticize the global dominion of the British Empire. Fascist propaganda depicted the British as ruthless colonialists, who exploited foreign lands and peoples to feed extravagant lifestyle habits like eating 
five meals a day. The term was used frequently in Italian politics after the Second Italo Abyssinian War, because despite having gained large colonial territories for itself, Britain approved of trade sanctions in the wake of Italian aggression against Ethiopia. The sanctions were depicted as an attempt to deny Italy its rightful colonial dominions, while at the same time, Britain was trying to extend its own influence and authority. The same term was used after World War I related to the so-called mutilated victory. The term was used in reference to a possible United Kingdom withdrawal from the European Union in the run-up to the referendum on the issue in 2016. An article in the French newspaper Le Parisien claimed that a poll showing that only 54% of French people supported UK membership of the EU compared to 55% of British people showed that the British will always be seen as the perfidious Albion. In contrast, the editor of the Financial Times, Lionel Barber, has written that too many people in the UK are under the illusion that most European countries cannot wait to see the back of perfidious Albion. Eventually, the United Kingdom voted to leave the EU. In arguing for a hard Brexit, and the EU rejecting a possible extension requested by the UK of the deadline to leave the EU, the Brexit supporting British MP Marc Francois addressed the European Council in April 2019, If you now try to hold on to us against our will, you will be facing perfidious Albion on speed. It would therefore be much better for all our sakes if we were to pursue our separate destinies, in a spirit of mutual respect. See also Anti-British sentiment Anglophobia <laughs>